every now and then, I just want to experiment a bit. I think it's pretty common as a game developer to want to try out a new idea, or want to spend some time learning some of the new features in the latest version of Unity. I figured it could be quite interesting to document these experiments in a video series with you, making notes of what I've learned along the way and some of the decisions I've come to while I'm exploring an idea. So welcome to Game Dev Sandbox. The working title for this was Matt's adventures into things he has no clue how to do but really wanted to figure out and make a video about, but that was a little too long for the name of a series, so uh, Game Dev Sandbox it is. Since working on the post-processing video, I've sort of had a growing question in my brain regarding the depth of field effect. You see, in the post-processing profile, I would usually set up all of the properties on a volume in edit mode, and with the depth of field effect, things like the focus distance and aperture have to be predefined. But that's not really how a camera or our eyes work. A fixed depth of field is kind of limiting, so I wanted to be able to dynamically adjust the focus distance on a camera. My basic premise here was, how do I get a camera to pull focus automatically depending on what I'm looking at. The first step really was to find a good scene to work with. I was originally thinking about putting a scene together manually. I wanted something with quite a lot of details, but I didn't want to spend a lot of time putting a scene like that together. I ended up heading onto the asset store and grabbing this architectural previs scene. It seemed like there would be lots of different things I could use as focus points, and there was enough space and visual detail in the scene to work with. I purchased the pack and imported it into Unity, which brought me into the package manager I was mildly confused at first before realizing that this now supports asset downloads, which is kind of great because it means I don't have to deal with the terrible asset store UI if I want to import stuff I own already. Once the pack was imported and set up, I began working on cleaning it up a bit. I just needed something to let me explore the scene in play mode while I was setting everything up. So I stuck the simple camera controller script that comes with the extras pack onto the main camera, then tweaked it a little bit to get the movement I was happy with for the scene. The scene came with a default post-process profile which I was quite happy with, but I just needed to add a depth of field effect, as that's kind of the whole point of this project. I played around with the settings a bit to get a nice depth of field that I could rack the depth of noticeably. Based on my experience with actual camera lenses, a good general rule of thumb is to reduce the aperture to between 3.4 and 5.2 for something manageable. With everything set up, it was time to try out my theory. Essentially, I thought about how best to adjust the focus distance based on what we're looking at. We should be able to raycast from the view and get a distance between the camera and any object the raycast hits, assuming that it has a collider attached. We should then be able to use that to set the focus distance on the post process. So I created a script on the camera to handle the raycast and manage the depth of field. I wanted to be able to see what was happening, so I used the draw gizmos function to draw the raycast in the scene view and preview the collision point. Once this was set up, I then added a function called set focus that would interact with the depth of field effect on the post-processing profile and set the focus distance based on the distance of our raycast. As it turns out, in order to change and interact with effects on a volume, you have to use the try get settings method on the profile in the volume. You can create a property for the effect type in the script. So in this case, it's a depth of field property, and then you need to assign it. A little bit strange, but whatever. And actually, it seems that that's all there was to it. I'm now able to move the camera around and it shifts depending on where the raycast hits. That's pretty cool. I sort of didn't even notice it was happening after a while. The depth of field began to feel quite natural because it was nearly always shifting to whatever I was focusing on. The main thing I noticed is the sharp shifts in focus between different points, especially if they had a greater distance between one another. There's a very snappy focus between the hinge here and the background. So I wanted to see if I could smooth that out a bit. So I changed from immediately setting the value to a focus speed multiplier and decided to lerp between the current focus distance and the raycast distance for a more gradual and controllable focus. This is definitely a more useful effect for cinematic uses of the camera where gradual changes make more sense, but I think for this project, even a little bit of transition between two focus distances would feel nicer than a simple snap. Initially, I set the focus speed really low and got really confused as to why the focus wasn't changing because I'm an idiot who doesn't understand how delta time or decimal number multiplication works. Anyway, eventually I figured out what was going on and whacked the speed up to about five. This felt good in some cases, but it was a bit too slow for those longer distances. I doubled my limit and eventually settled on a focus speed of around eight with an aperture set to 5.4. I also ended up adding a variable for the max focus distance, as I realized that when I was returning to focus on the background, it would shift too quickly due to my distance value jumping from around one or two units to 80 or 90. So I needed to reduce that to something that would work nicely for the maximum separation of distance in the scene instead. 
I played around with the setting and watched the gizmo in the scene view until I reached something I was happy with, which ended up being a value of around 5. At this point, I'd basically reached the goal of my experiment. But as I was playing around more, I started getting some real first person exploration vibes from this little demo. So I wanted to see if I could take this a bit further and actually walk around the environment a bit. I began building out a basic first person movement controller that hooked into the logic from the character controller component to move forward and backwards and strafe left and right. I then added in some calculations of the mouse position to rotate the character around on the spot. And so now I was able to move around the environment a bit more realistically. I collided with walls and other objects thanks to the character controller. The mouse look felt really restricted though. I definitely needed to add support to look around vertically too. So I added a reference to the camera and then rotated it along the X axis based on our mouse movement. It was at this point, as I began looking at the shiny bowl thing and this rather comfortable looking sofa, that I fully committed to the whole first person exploration vibe and began thinking, what if you could interact with objects and bring them up to your face with the depth of field shifting alongside it? I also got a bit carried away and fell off the world for a moment. So I fixed that, added a mesh collider and headed back outside and then spent rather a bit too long playing around with the depth of field on these rocks. After admiring the scenery for a bit, I got back into the idea of focusing on objects in the scene. I updated the depth of field controller to allow for an object to be designated as a point of focus and only use the raycasting based approach if the field is null. I designated the chair as a point of focus and wandered around a bit to make sure that it was working. From there, I started working on making objects interactable. I wrote a basic script that would move a game object to a target position when select was called and place it back when it was deselected. In the camera controller, I edited my raycast to detect if a script was active on the game object it had hit, and then select it if the mouse was down, placing it just in front of the camera. So I hit play, looked over at the plate, and BAM! Yep, that's a plate. I spent quite a bit of time adding a material to the selection controller for when it's hovered over, and then moved some of my mouse input code around to better handle picking up and putting down the object that's in focus. I was also tempted to have the object reparent itself to the camera, so you could carry it around but I wasn't really interested in that for this experiment. So instead, I just locked the movement controller if an object was in focus and redirected the mouse movement towards rotating the object instead of the controller or camera. I got the input directions the wrong way around the first time because of course I did, but after correcting some of those issues, I was able to interact with the plate and inspect it. I got pretty fed up of seeing the mouse at this point and fully wanted to commit to the first person vibe. So I popped a crosshair on the screen and hid the mouse cursor in code just totally doubling down. I also may have forgotten to keep track of the initial rotation of the plate, so I fixed that quickly. And at this point I was feeling pretty good with the whole system. However, I felt that the object selection stuff was a bit too snappy. I thought a smoother, more gradual movement to simulate the player picking up the object would have felt a lot better. So I moved a whole bunch of code in the interaction script to allow the position and rotation of the object to be lerped. And I think that looks a lot better. It felt really nice having the object gradually move towards the camera when it's selected. At this point, I was really happy with everything. I went through and added the interaction script to more objects in the scene and gave it a play. Taking that original premise and turning it into this little interaction based toy with variable depth of field was really awesome. I can easily see ways of turning something like this into a more fully fledged experience, perhaps in the style of an escape room or something. It's definitely an idea I might revisit soon. I think it's quite cool to be able to pull focus like this, and I'm sure you can think of a lot of neat applications of the concept. If you've enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and let me know what you think. Also, if you're a fan of the channel and you'd like to support the content I'm working on here, oh boy, do I have some good news for you. You can now head over to gamedevguide.store and be among some of the first viewers to pick up exclusive Game Dev Guide related items. We all know coffee is our lifeblood and it's always important to drink from a good vessel. So don't worry friends, I've got you covered with this lovely Game Dev Guide branded mug. Alternatively, if you're more of a wear your fandom on your chest kind of person, you can also go for the classic logo tee available in a few different colors. And if you want to stay warm and snuggly, you can also go for my personal favorite, this pocket logo hoodie available in either red or white. Any sales from the store go directly into supporting the channel. So if you're interested in helping me make more videos, be sure to head over to gamedevguide.store and pick something up today. And when you receive your item, be sure to take a photo and tag me either on Twitter or Instagram. YouTube tells me that many of you watching these videos aren't subscribed to the channel, so you can fix that by hitting the subscribe button down below. Alternatively, if you're looking for more videos to watch from me, 
why not check out some of the new ones on screen now. Until next time, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.